So we have v final x squared equals the initial x squared plus 2a sub x delta x. Um, and as you can see, this is missing time, but it, it gives us a place to slot in all the numbers that we know, and it's going to tell us what delta x is. And again, if, since this is a one-dimensional problem, some people might leave out some of these x subscripts, but you're going to need these for two-dimensional motion, so I'll just go ahead and put those in. So here's so our equation. In this case, delta x isn't like the x is a subscript. That's the x as in the um, what we're trying to solve for. Uh, that's right. So it just turns out that um, for displacement, you don't need subscripts because the x is part of the, is the name of the variable. Right. But for acceleration and velocity, you need a subscript to indicate whether you're focusing on x or y. For displacement, you don't need a subscript because if you're focusing on x, you say delta x, and if you're focusing on y, you say delta y. But if you're doing with velocity, you need a subscript to show whether it's the x velocity or the y velocity. Okay. So now we can start plugging in. That's right. All right, so our v final is 0. Our v initial is 75, and I think numbers are so crucial, I'm even going to plug in the positive number here, positive sign here. I, I think the signs are so crucial, I'm even going to plug this in as a positive number. And our acceleration, I'm definitely going to be careful to plug in our negative sign here. And what do I plug in for delta x? Well, I'm not plugging in anything for that, but that's what the question is asking. Now, by the way, should we plug the units into this equation? Well, it depends how strong our math skills are. If someone has strong math skills, I would recommend that they plug the units in because you can get some insight from that. Uh, but if someone has weak math skills, it's probably better to leave the units out because they're going to make the math more confusing. Um, I think you've said that you felt, you felt that you might find the math challenging here. So I'm going to encourage you, in most cases, to leave all the units out just because it adds an extra layer of complication to the math. Um, we've already made sure that the units are consistent with each other. As long as you already know that your units are all consistent with each other, you don't necessarily have to plug them into the equation. Now, your instructors and your TAs usually will plug units, I think, into a lot of their equations, but that's because they're so good at the math that that doesn't confuse them. Um, sometimes maybe it would be best to do it both ways. First do it without the units, and then if you want, you can get extra practice by plugging the units in. But um, we're just getting started here, so to make things simple, we'll leave out the units. What, were you going to say something? No. Okay. All right. So, um, well, now, now the physics is over, and now this is a math problem. Once we have an equation in one unknown, we just have to solve for that equation. So let's see if we can do that step by step. Okay. Yeah, so you worked out the math. That's good. Now, we did not plug any units into the equation, but still, we know that we started with units that were all consistent with each other. So at the end, we can go in and say, well, the logical units for this to come out as is meters. So the one part I'm weak at is knowing that that 9 and delta x like, are together. You know, right. like I wanted to go plus 9 to bring it over or something like that. Yeah. So is there like a rule or? Uh, it's more like a feel okay. uh, than a rule. But um, 
ba basically, the, the point here is there's two things that we need to detach from the delta x. We need to detach this number, and we need to detach this number. And the only question is, what order should we do it in? Should we, get, should we separate the 56, 25 first, or should we separate the 9 first? Well, so the rule, the rule is first you separate the numbers that are connected by addition or subtraction, and only later do you separate the numbers that are connected by multiplication or division. That's the rule. So that's what you did here. First, you needed to get this delta x term away from this number because it was connected by subtraction, or actually by addition. You need to get this away because it was separated by addition, and you did that by moving this to the other side. So that was good. You could also have moved the 56, 25 to the other side. Either of those would have worked. All right, but then you had to separate the 9. But it's good that you did that second. If you had tried to separate the 9 from the delta x over here, we would have gotten gobbledygook. That wouldn't have happened. So it looks like you actually, you weren't 100% confident, but you actually did have the right feel. First we separate the number that's connected by addition, and only later do we separate the number that's connected by multiplication or division. And it's good that you didn't um, do any of those steps on paper. You actually wrote down that you were adding this to both sides, and when you wrote down when you're dividing, um, that, that's the best way to avoid careless mistakes. And this is the right answer, so you worked that out, okay? Um, one minor technicality, <clears throat> again, it's good to always focus on signs. Mathematically, did, the math, did, our, did our answer come out mathematically positive or negative? Positive. All right, so I'm going to include that in the answer. Okay. Um, and that makes sense because, after all, is the plane moving in the positive direction? Is the plane moving in the positive direction? Yeah. 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 That's right. We know that the, the, um, the plane is moving to the right, right, and we've chosen that to be the positive direction. So it makes sense to say that it's going to be displaced in the positive direction. The plane, if you go, if you start at the initial position of the plane, and you watch it until it gets to its final position, you'll see it displacing itself to the right, which is the positive direction. If this number had come out negative, that would just tell us we made an algebra mistake. So then we have to go back and find it, because our common sense tells us that we're being displaced in the positive direction. So we can use the, we can check the sign to see whether our answer makes sense or not. All right, so we got our 5625, which is what the question was asking us for. And that's how you do a kinematics problem. Now, the key thing is, of course, you won't see this precise problem on the test, but you'll very likely to see a problem like it. And the key is, again, not to just do what feels good, but to use this kind of systematic approach that we use. So you have the five-step approach. Try to draw a clear picture that shows as much as possible. And again, it's really important to actually physically write down the five variables, not just try to keep those in our head. Um, it's really important to physically label with a question mark, what the question is asking us for, to label these numbers. We have to recognize that we only need three numbers. We don't need all four numbers. And then the variable that we have no question or number about, that's kind of our missing variable, so to speak. And then we pick out the equation that's missing that variable. That's the fastest way to move, move through this. Um, so where would most people have made their mistakes on this problem? Well, first of all, a lot of people would not have been able to come up with this number because it was not given in the problem. Most people only think about the numbers that are actually specifically stated in the problem, and they wouldn't have realized that this number has to be zero. Um, that's the kind of hidden information you have to look out for. So just by thinking about the problem, you have to say to yourself, well, I know based on common sense that if I want the minimum length of the runway, what they're really asking is, what's the minimum length of the runway where the plane can still, come, still has enough space to come to a stop? We still want the plane to come to a stop, so the final velocity has to be zero. That's the kind of hidden information we have to watch out for. And the other big um, trap is the one that um, you, you avoided, that this has to be a negative number. Because notice when they gave you the acceleration of the problem, they just said 4.5. They didn't say negative 4.5. It was your job to think about that sign. So those are the, the big only, traps. The only hint it did say is it said, i.e., undergoes acceleration directed opposite its right. velocity. So now ah, that I know right. yes. parallel, anti-parallel thing, right. that. That's a pretty big hint now, yeah. yeah, now that we've seen that. On the test, they wouldn't be obligated to tell you that. But yeah, that's right, that's a good hint. So you can see they're using the same terminology like you said that we used earlier. Yeah. They, they said the acceleration is directed opposite to the velocity, which means anti-parallel. And this is again why you want to actually draw the velocity and acceleration vectors. That helped us to get the signs right. Yeah. Okay, well I would recommend trying this very problem again on your own to make sure that uh, you can get through all of those steps. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well. Um, my instinct is just to spend the remaining time on more kinematics. That's yeah. the most important stuff in front of When you try a problem where there's two objects like approaching each other kind of thing. Okay. All right. That's a lot harder than this, but you might see that on the test. Okay. So let's go through that. On your own, um, when you get back home and start practicing these, first you should do a lot of one object problems, and then you can move on to the two objects. But we'll see how to do the two objects.
for the two object problems, the handout um, is not quite complete enough. So um, we'll have to expand on that. 